day guys and welcome to Lake Washington in Seattle. Today we're here on the Mare's 85 Powercat. It's the perfect blend of sport fishing boat meets luxury yachting cruiser. White Lightning's made to conquer the seas from Mexico to Alaska. With her twin Detroit Diesel 1450 horsepower engines, she cruises at 22 knots, maxing out at around 30 knots. I just wanted to introduce you guys to Captain Doug Link, who has been with this vessel for just over two and a half decades. Doug, tell me how it all started. Yeah, so as you said, I'm Captain Doug Link. I've uh, been with the boat for uh, quite a long time. I started back in 98 as deckhand. Owners took me out cruising with them and left the captain behind because the, the owner would run the boat. Uh, after being with them for a couple of years, they said, well, we'll help you out get your captain's license. So I did that. And then a couple of years later in 2002, the old captain decided that was about his time to retire. And so I, I took over the helm from, from him then and uh, been with it ever since. Since I've got into the boating industry like yeah. I have, I, we've definitely kept our thumb on all the catamarans that are out there and kind of compared. And it's amazing the look and the, the design of this boat and how superior it is. You look at the side of the, the profile of this boat, it looks like just a normal, beautiful sport fish with the raked bows and the 71 foot waterline length. It just looks fast as it's sitting. And then when you start to move around to the bow or to the stern, you start to realize the width of this boat and how much you get out of an 85 foot footprint. Having five staterooms, seven heads, 1800 square feet of livable space. It's just, you get so much in such a, a beautiful platform as this boat. When you get out in some of the sloppier stuff, it, it's amazing how well this thing handles. We'll be doing 17 knots where in a mono hull you'd be going seven. It's a semi-displacement hull, so you push a little bit of water along the way, but it just, it rides phenomenally. We've had, we've had other boat builders come aboard the boat and look at it and say, you know, it's cost prohibitive us, for us to even try and copy a boat like this. Yeah. Uh, just the hand sanding, hand fairing, all the stuff that they did. Um, the, the windows up front, you know, very unique. The curved glass, all of that. We always joke, once you go cat, you never go back. Heading down the port side deck here, you get an immediate sense of safety and security with the 31 inch high stainless steel rails, keeps you secure all the way to the bow and beyond. As you enter the bow, you get a sense of how large this vessel really is with her near 27 foot beam. Let's go check out what we have up here on the bow. On the port side here, we have a deep storage locker for lines and fenders that also features a spot free water filtration system and additional shore power connections. Centerline here on the bow, we have over 100 meters of anchor chain around a hydraulic winch connected to a fjord anchor, which is just over 200 pounds. To starboard here, we have an additional storage locker, which is sealed, meaning it's great for storing propane and gas for your tender. Moving aft here, we have a 1500 pound nautical structures davit, which launches a custom built AquaPro tender with a 50 horsepower Honda outboard and upgraded air and foam tubes. As we walk down the starboard side deck, there's something to note here. Mares, the builder, thought about everything. Both here on the starboard side and the port side, you're able to fill up all three tanks to a total of 3,900 gallons. As we make it down here to the aft deck, the size of this impressive space is something you would only see typically on a 50 meter vessel. And to go through the details, I'll give it over to Captain Doug. Thank you. So yeah, this boat has been a fantastic platform for fishing, for crabbing, for cleaning fish. There's a 138 gallon live bait tank back here. So in Mexico, we'd fill that thing up with mackerel. In Alaska, we'd fill it up with crab and clams. The back deck was designed with cockpit trays that hold all washdown gear, crab pots, everything else. But the trays actually come out. You have full access to the engine room. So if generators need to be removed, if Water makers need to come out, transmissions, everything, but the engines can actually come out through these holes. So it's a great design for any kind of maintenance that's major that you have to do on the boat. Back in either corner here, there's actually a post that holds a spare davit. So you can have a davit if you ever needed to do anything for propellers or even on a, a 
skiff to remove engines or do anything else, we got maintenance for that. So over here we've got a, a rod locker slash drying locker. It's got a fan built in with a heater. So any of your wet gear you can put in there and store it and heat it up. And for Alaska, it's wonderful when things are all wet and cold. On this side, we've got a bait tank with drawers for all your fishing gear. And then on this part here, we've got a vacuum bagging machine, commercial vacuum bagging machine that takes up this locker, has a cover over it. And that way you can vacuum bag your fish and then send it over to this side, which is a one of two 24 cubic foot freezers on the boat with storage for over 700 pounds of fish back here at one time. So you got plenty of storage in here. And there's, there's racks so you can freeze the fish as it comes in. Before we head up to the bridge, I just wanted to mention this aft deck area, not only is it the ideal fishing platform that stands above any other, but it is a very versatile space. You can have a dining room table, which is great for entertaining, as well as making it a dance floor or anything like that. Coming up to the flybridge aft here, we've got built-in seating for six, plus additional chairs. And uh, Doug, what do we have underneath the seating here? So down in New Zealand, they built this in so that you didn't, get to, you didn't have to see them, but there's two six-man life rafts that can come out, pull out, and are attached to the boat and the vessel so you can throw them over the side for safety, but they're at least buried back in there so you don't have to see them the whole time. Moving inside from the flybridge deck, we have a fully enclosed pilot house, which is great for keeping you out of the elements, whether you're in Mexico, in the heat, or up in Alaska in that cool weather. To port, we have a large chart drawer area with a chart table on top, ample seating area both sides to port and starboard, and this great bar area here, which has an ice maker and a refrigerator. Just forward, I'll leave it to Captain Doug here to take you through the navigation station. So they designed the bridge that everybody's at the same height. We've got the center section here is set up for three people to sit across and you can pull out the handrails and lay across if you want to. So the navigation setup here features reliable Furuno radars, redundancy with everything. There's two radars, a navigation computer set up with Noble Tech software and Noble Tech charts. Alarm system ties in everything, including burglar alarm system, as well as high bilge and fire and uh, any mechanical things that could come up in the engine rooms. There's even two stereos on the boat. There's one for the main salon that runs up here, or there's one that cuts off the main salon. So if you want to listen to your own music up here, you can do that. With this helm station here, um, I love the, uh, the wheel there. Is there something? So this was actually custom done in New Zealand by the boat yard. Uh, it was during the time of the America's Cup. And so this is a close copy of the America's Cup helm wheel. That's awesome. Speaking and of New Zealand, these uh, helm seats with this sheepskin leather just reminds me of uh, this vessel's Kiwi heritage yes. as well. They had, to, they had to tie it in with where it came from. I love that. And, cool. and getting back to the helm station, this is the only actual helm station that you can see that's a physical station like it is. The boat is actually operated in three different places other than the helm, which is up in the bow, down in the cockpit, and back here on the stern. So the entire boat can be operated with the handheld unit here, which runs both full ahead and stern, port starboard, thruster and steering, and a 30 foot cable so you can walk back deck anywhere you want to, or you can plug in down below, single hand the boat if you need to, or be up on the bow and pull the anchor and not lose control of the boat ever. To keep everything as self-sufficient as it can be, being the only bridge station that we have, they even modeled in a, a day head after a 747 on one of his trips to New Zealand as he was building the boat. So when you walk in there, you might feel like you're at flight. Wow, that's awesome. And I'm sure at speed in this boat, you truly do feel like you're flying. You do. <laughs> yeah. Stepping inside the main salon here on the main deck, we have Avonite countertops, which is great for low maintenance and durability. Rimu wood throughout the vessel to give it a warm, homey feel, and Japanese Belbian textured cabinets. Here on the port side, we have a huge, comfortable lounge seating area for up to 14 guests with two large coffee tables and new chaise lounges. Another thing that's great about CATS is they have so much space on board, but they also have a lot of places where you can store stuff. So we've got areas like this here, for all of your spare parts, 
extra filters, anything that you need, especially when you're going up and down the coast. To starboard, we have an additional day head to make it easily accessible from the aft deck or the salon area. Moving forward, we have a large bar area with a pop-up 55 inch Sony TV. We also have a U-line ice maker down here. Moving forward to this open galley, it is a chef's dream with full-size galley appliances throughout and these huge countertop spaces, which include two under-counter sub-zero refrigeration units. Moving forward to port, you have this intentionally designed raised up dining area for 10, so you can enjoy a scenic view whilst dining on the water. Let's head down to the cabins. As we walk down the forward stairwell to port is a large VIP cabin with a walk around queen berth and a large ensuite. In the center is a bunk cabin, perfect for kids. To starboard, we have a large master cabin with a wraparound desk, tons of storage, and an upgraded Samsung 32 inch TV. Just forward, we have an additional ensuite head. As we leave the master, pushing back to midships on the port side, we head down the stairwell to additional galley storage, which features large pantry area, huge dry storage, and a large 24 cubic feet freezer. Continuing down off this landing, we have an additional stateroom with two single berths, side by side, a large porthole, and just forward with an ensuite head and a large shower. Moving over to the starboard side of midships, we go down an additional stairwell, which takes us to the laundry area with a whirlpool combination washer and dryer. Moving aft is an ensuite head with an additional connecting cabin. This cabin has two side-by-side -side berths and a small desk, making it a perfect crew quarters. To wrap up our tour today, we're gonna to head aft to the two engine rooms. As we head into the starboard engine room, we're immediately greeted by the large Detroit diesel 1450 horse 16V92 engine. Just aft, we have a custom built workbench with a snap-on tool storage area. As we go down to the starboard engine room, this space mirrors the port side as well. The only difference, we have cruise air, air compressor units. Forward of the engine room, we have a large Detroit diesel 1450 horsepower 16 V92 engine, and aft we have a large Northern Lights generator. On the inboard side of each engine room, we have Dolphin Series FCI 1000 gallon a day water makers. Perfect for long range cruising and being away from the dock for extended periods of time. Thanks for joining me on the tour today of the Mare's Powercat 85 White Lightning. A true masterpiece in design and performance. If you're ready to embark on the journey of a lifetime, feel free to reach out to me, Ari Sher, anytime. See you on the water.